good morning. Welcome to morning. glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together hear us O Lord for your mercy is great we will exalt you O God our Savior and praise your name forever and ever glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen let us pray father we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, 
things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 82 and 98. Psalm 82 God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Taken from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, 
and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Word of God. Taken from the Gospel according to John. Chapter 3, verses 22 to 30. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Anon near Salim, because water was abundant there, and the people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John the Baptist, the prophet and forerunner of Jesus, was the son of elderly parents, Elizabeth and Zechariah, and was related to Jesus on his mother's side. His birth is celebrated six months before Christmas Day, since, according to Luke, Elizabeth became pregnant six months before the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. John figures prominently in all four Gospels but the account of his birth is given only in the Gospel according to Luke. His father Zechariah, a priest of the temple at Jerusalem, was struck speechless because he doubted a vision foretelling John's birth. When his speech was restored, Zechariah uttered a canticle of praise, the Benedictus, which is one of the canticles in the daily office. John lived ascetically in the desert. He was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt, and ate locusts and wild honey. He preached repentance, 
and called upon people to prepare for the coming of the kingdom and of the Messiah, baptizing his followers to signify their repentance and new life. Jesus himself was baptized by John in the Jordan. John had many followers, some of whom became Jesus' disciples. Because of his denunciation of the sins of Herod, especially Herod's incestuous marriage, John incurred the enmity of Herodias, Herod's wife, and was put in prison. Through Herodias's plotting with Salome, her daughter, Herod was led to promise a gift to Salome, who demanded John's head. John was thereupon executed. John is remembered during Advent as a prophet, and at Epiphany as the baptizer of Jesus. The Gospel according to John quotes the Baptist as saying to his followers that Jesus is the Lamb of God, and prophesying, He must increase, but I must decrease. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must become greater, while I must become less. Or another translation says, He must increase, while I decrease. John says this to his disciples. You know, John missed a real good opportunity there. A really good opportunity to make it about himself. To convince the disciples, don't follow him, keep with me. To convince others, forget about Jesus, forget about the Messiah, forget about what I told you before. He does not know what he's doing. He young, he is now out here, and the list goes on. Where he could have just put so many negative things in their head to get them to come away from their thoughts of following Jesus and to continue to follow him. But instead, he chose. Instead, he focused on what was the right thing to do. That God's name be glorified. He made it about Jesus and not about himself. And we all need to take a lesson from that. He said to the disciple, remember, because remember the disciple came to him and was asking him about Jesus and, and what Jesus was doing. Is that right? And Jesus and John said to him, remember I told you, I am not the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. I'm just out here to do God's business and God's bidding. I am not the Messiah. We need to stop. We need to stop the selfish way that we have to make it about ourselves and we feel sometimes and i i genuinely think that some of us feel that we're making it about god when we say it's not about me you know it's about god but we don't realize right after that sentence we said we we say i'm just putting on my money and i'm just doing all and if it wasn't for me i so because we lead with the sentence it's like when we say, um, I don't mean any disrespect, but, and then you say, it's still being disrespectful. Even if we say it in front, it does not change the actual matter of fact. It doesn't change the fact. We need to follow John's guidance. John was never about himself. John's whole life showed it was never about him, but always about leading others to God. And he said, count it good, celebrate it. What joy, great joy it would be to bring others to God. How good it should make us feel that God is glorified in our actions. The way we treat others, the things we say to one another, our responses to situations, how we live. The examples we set, what people see when they see us. This is why it's always important to think about, think about our mortality. Think about your funeral, like plan your funeral. And I'm not talking about the casket, and I'm not talking about or who will say what, but really consider 
What would people say about you? Are you living up to what God wants you to do? The way he wants you to live? Consider that everything we do ought to point others to God. I want to challenge us. Really challenge us and, and we challenge ourselves from this challenge, I mean. Let's try to do things differently. Let's make that commitment to try a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, to be better. The world needs us to be better. If we set the right examples, others will follow. The change that we're looking for in this world starts with us. We have to move away from the selfishness. We have to move away from our own personal desires, the greed, the everything and every single thing we do. How much food we put out to eat, who we share with and who we choose to share with, how we respond to situations. Is it negative response? Is it a positive response? We have to consider all of these things. These things are our actions and our responses to situations. And it shows us, it proves to us our faith and who we're journeying with, as well as what others see from us. Because as believers, we're not gluttonous. As believers, we consider others who have, who have, those who have, and those who do not have. And we share, we're willingly open to sharing. We consider the way we respond to others or situation is our response oh god i don't have but more so thank you lord for what i have our response to things that we don't like the way something happened is it always to fight or are we about peace bringing peace to situations are we about being amicable are we about forgiving are we about reconnecting somebody has offended us are we about finding out the truth of what of the matter or their side or are we just going to take ourselves away pull ourselves out of the situation and stand back but this is not who we're called to be or the way we're called to live you see if we respond the way god has continuously been showing us how to respond then it shows that we're journeying as believers. It shows that he is in the midst, that we're journeying with him, journeying in this life, I mean, going through life with him, trying to change, trying to be better, trying to live better lives. And this, my brothers and sisters, is us in not making that effort, is us showing God to others. We're not responding like the world because we're not of the world. We're of God. And so this is important for us to understand and to really make that effort. I believe we can do it. Let's just try this week here, this week coming, the week after. We will start small. Let's try one thing, one little thing at a time and try to change that way. Forgive. Offer kindness to others that neighbor that you don't want to talk to try say good morning even if they don't respond good morning and not a rough morning but with a smile from your heart good morning just start simple and we move from there please let us try to be the change we want to see in this world. We are not doing our part, hence evil continues to prevail in our tongues. So let's start little and let it just blossom outward. The light cannot be hidden. If we would let our light shine, little by little, it will light up the world. I employ you, let us strive to decrease our worldly self. And let God increase in us and through us and across this eight. Amen. Let me be
as gold and precious silver purify my heart let me be as gold pure gold refiner's fire my heart's one is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. 
Endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, and in us and through us, your will may be done. We pray the collect for the nativity of Saint John. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant Saint John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your Son or Savior by preaching repentance. Make us so to follow his teaching and holy life that we may truly repent according to his preaching and follow his example, constantly speaking the truth, boldly rebuking vice and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite us to offer our own petitions at this time. I want to pray for us to truly dedicate ourselves to God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give us strength and courage to do your will and do all that you require of us. All that we have comes from you, O oh God. Help us to cherish and love what you have given us. Help us to surrender ourselves to you and your will. Let your grace and your love be our wealth. Let it be enough for us. Help us, Lord, to surrender ourselves to you. Lord, help us to dedicate our way to your control, our way to your will. Help us to keep our minds guided and our hearts drawn to you. Show us the way that we must go and give us the strength and courage to follow through. That in all we do, all we say, all we think will bring you honor and glory and will be for the welfare of your people. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a wonderful week, everyone. And remember, let God increase as we decrease. <laughs>